All the way back in February, I did a video on something called Rough, which is an incredibly fast type checker built in Rust that has become incredibly popular over its time. Um, it was it was becoming popular. It became a little bit popular at the time I made that video. But the popularity has not died down at all. Since then, they've started a new company to handle it called Astral. And it's gone into 0.1 versioning now. The current version at the time of recording is 0.1.4. So we're no longer in 0.0.x. Uh, the pilot porting has made good progress. If it had even started at all in February, I don't remember. I think it had. Uh, a lot more flakate rules have been implemented. Basically, things are just going in a very good pace right now. And in those eight months, well, very near the end of those eight months, actually, they introduced the new rough formatter. And that was in version 0.0.291, I believe. And it was designed as a drop-in replacement for black. So now Flake 8 has been more or less taken out. Pylint is being taken out as we speak. And black is now also in the firing line. There are a few things that I want to talk to you about, so I just want to quickly show it off um, using a single file. I want to show the speed benefits, and I also want to talk about whether or not you should actually be using it in your projects, because it's a little bit more complicated than just it's faster, so it's better. So I'll talk about that in a bit. But for now, I want to, and actually before we do this, I'm actually going to rename this so it doesn't have a space in it, because that's just annoying. So we have this test.py file, uh, and this is horribly, horribly formatted. Uh, this is... Um, essentially a bastardized version of the code I wrote in my Python 3.12 typing video. This is an example of that, and I've just gone through and I've completely ruined it just so we can see the formatter in action. So if we do, say, black.test.py, uh, uh, um, and of course it's formatted all of them. Oh, because I did the dot. <laughs> all right, that's my bad. And we can see that it's well, it's formatted it perfectly according to Pepe. You have the two lines in between classes and functions and everything. Everything's you know all on one line as it needs to be. All the quotes are in the right place, etc. etc. It's all it's all very good and lovely. Now for in this test copy, and if we just undo um oh no, actually oh really? All right, we'll just do it on this test then. I did have originally the two files in mind to make this easier, but apparently that's not gonna work. And we do rough format test.py. You can see that the uh, the CLI interface is not quite as pretty as Black's, uh, but it gets the job done. And actually it formats it, if I load the copy back, it formats it identically in this instance. And that's because rough is designed as a drop-in replacement for Black. It's not exactly the same, uh, there are some intentional changes that have been made. So the rough formatter is a little bit less opinionated and it's a little bit more configurable. So if you're a staunch defender of using single quotes over double quotes, then you can configure that in rough. You can't configure that in black. And to do that, you would have either your pyproject.toml or you can actually have a rough, a, a rough, a rough.toml. And then inside this format, if you're using... Um, PyProject.toml would be tool.rough.format. Uh, uh, you'll have, and I think, I'm going to guess at this, I think it's single quotes equals true, but it will warn us if it's not. Um, it's not single quotes, ah, quote style. It'd be quote style equals single then. Uh, equals single like that. And now, there we go. So reformatted and it's come up all in single quotes. So now if you're a single quotes kind of guy, or girl, or neither, <laughs> um, then you, you know, you'll be perfectly at home with the formatter. And there are plenty of other options as well. Um, actually, if you, if you provide an, un, an unknown one, it even gives you all the ones you can have within the category, which is quite nice. But that's only for a single file. You know, the differences between black and rough aren't necessarily going to be... Um, Super obvious when you compare it against a single file. So I think we probably need to compare it against something a little bit bigger. Something, oh, I don't know, maybe the scale of the TensorFlow source code, for example. Uh, one of the bigger projects out there, well, well over a million lines of code in here and plenty enough files for us to test uh, just how much faster rough is than black in this instance. So if we do something like time, 
a black dot. I'm just going to check. I'm not even going to run the formatting changes because I don't really want to have to deal with undoing it all. And this should give us a good idea of how much faster uh, rough is the black. Uh, one thing I don't know, and I will put text on the screen now, denoting this, uh, I don't know if the rough formatter can deal with Jupyter Notebook files as yet. It might not be able to. At the moment, it might be able to. I don't know. That's why I said I was going to put something on the screen. But if you need um, uh, Jupyter Notebook support, then do keep that in mind. Uh, as you can see, Black is just going through and giving us a list of files that he would reformat. It's doing it somewhat quickly, I guess. It sort of depends if you have any experience of any other linters. Or formats, it's not a linter, is it? And as you can see, it does sort of have a bit of an effect on things. If you look up in this top corner, those of you on small screens won't be able to see this. But it says that my, my M1 Max is currently at 102 degrees centigrade. And the fans, I don't know if you can hear that, are spinning up quite badly. That was at about 60 before we started this. So black scanning of the source code is actually pushing an M1 Max to its limits. <laughs> yeah, and I will say this is an M1 Max, so this is not like a this is not a pitiful processor at all that we're on this on, I think. Well, there we go. Just about there. And we can see that it would reformat 3,000... It's really getting loud now. 3,055 files in a total of a minute and 24.53 seconds. Which is... Um, yeah. It's, it's pretty slow. I mean, considering how many files there are, you could say that it was pretty quick. It's, you know what? That's... The MacBook is now going at pretty much its maximum fan speed. I don't know if you can hear that. Here you go. Uh, my Windows computer idling was probably about that loud. So, you know, M1s. But now that we have an idea of how fast black is to do this, let's see how fast rough is at the same job. So if you do this, uh, oh, it's done. <laughs> Didn't actually do a time on that. Let me just do that again. Uh, let, me, uh, let, me, let me do this properly. Let me do, all uh, right. Let's get rid of the cache and then do time rough. What was it format dot and then double dash check? Probably be a little bit slower than it was. Oh no, it's not. <laughs> so we did that whole lot in a rather, oh God, that's a rather scary, it's not, Halloween's gone. <laughs> it's not Halloween anymore. Uh, in a rather scary amount of time. And also without um, sending my Max fans into a huge, uh, into a huge spin, which is, pretty mental actually just how much faster that is i think that's like several hundred times well maybe not several hundred times faster but that is i think probably about 130 120 times faster something like that so yeah pretty big speed improvements there but again this is a very extreme example we're doing it on you'll notice the uh, eagle eyed among you will notice that it only wants to format 3025 files now not the full 3055 and if you were to actually change all these files, it, do, it doesn't even take that much longer to do all this. <laughs> it took 100 milliseconds more to format all those files. And if we run uh, black again, and we actually tell it to format it this time. So it's only it should only format about 30 files. But we'll be able to see that it does actually go through and change uh, some stuff. And I will just skip over this this time. I won't make you wait again. <laughs> So when I said that it only want to change 30 files, I did um, forget that Ruff and Black did have different opinions on certain things. It wants to format 588 files. This is after the Ruff checks. So we do this again, and we can actually um, do this with a diff to actually get a diff. So this doesn't actually um, format anything if you if you use the diff option. It just shows you what it's going to change. And you can see the sort of thing that it want to change. So for example, this, this is across three lines. Black may have put this across three lines. It probably has actually. But Rough would actually choose to put it all back on one line. If we go up again, uh, we can see, oh, that's, a, if, that's probably not what we want. So this is yeah exactly the same thing happening. This is exactly the same thing happening again. Uh, that, what on earth is this? <laughs> so this, I think this is Black's doing. Um, where it's done uh, this triple format with a slice and then it's put the one not down here. Ruff has seemingly realized that it is a string 
Or maybe it's not a string, actually. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's the start or the end of a string. Um, might actually be the end, but it's it's not done this weird, annoying, and ugly format. It's uh, kept it a lot cleaner. Um, the same idea with this. You know, it, it puts flags on other lines and all this, that, and the other. So it does. Have, yeah, it has a few other opinions, or, or I should say, a few different opinions to what Black does. And this is one of the things that I wanted to talk about. So if I just zoom this in a little bit. So philosophy says it's not to innovate in cross but rather innovate in performance. And it is a drop-in replacement for black. That is the main ethos here. Um, you can configure it. So you can see you have quote style and an indent style. You also have your line length in the main master settings. So this line length, what's quite nice about this is the linter and the formatter will use the same line length setting. So if your linter is checking for line lengths, then your formatter will format to those line lengths, which is quite nice. It has the same format on and format off and format skip syntax. It also has the YA, or I believe this is yet another Python formatter um, equivalence. I, have, I haven't actually looked. Let me let me see. Let me see if I guessed that correctly. Um, oh, it doesn't say. Oh, that's interesting. Well, never mind. <laughs> um, but this is the one thing that I did want to talk about. So is it right for use at the moment and the answer is i don't really know it depends on whether or not you use any of these linting rules or how important you see these rules to be or you know whether you put more of an importance on formatting versus linting but long story short some of the linting rules um conflict with the formatter so one I've seen in particular is COM812. So say you had something like this. You had a really long function name that goes onto a new line and you have four arguments, one, two, three, four. If you try and do your rough uh, format uh, test two here, it won't, is it not long enough? Oh, it might not be long enough. Let me just do something like that. I thought it would have been long enough. But yeah, there we go. Uh, so it's now putting all these onto a new line, but it's not doing a trailing comma. So if you were to do rough check test two, and then uh, select com812, we'll get an error saying that the training comma's missing, but this is something that the formatter has done. And this is what he's talking about when it's talking about conflictions between formatters and the linters. So in an ideal world, the formatter would format the code in such a way that you don't get any linting errors. Um, if we were to put a, a new line on here, then we would get, um, uh, we'd, you know, not get any errors in the linter. If we formatted it now, it would take a leaf out of Black's book and now it would format it across the line and then you won't get any linting errors on COM812. But this is what it means when it's talking about um, <clears throat> like conflicting rules. So the formatter sometimes leaves you with linting errors and you could kind of get away with this if something is auto fixable. So like COM812 is I think always, yeah, is always fixable. So for something like this, it's not a huge deal because you can run the formatter and then you can run the linter with the specific rules with the double dash fix option and then that would fix everything up and then you'd probably have to run the formatter again to then push everything onto a new line. Um, but yeah, at that point it does kind of become a bit messy and not particularly ideal. So, in this state where the formatter is not amazingly mature, I imagine a lot of these will be fixed, but in, in the current state where the formatter is not amazingly mature, whether or not you decide to use it will depend on whether or not you put more of a precedence on the formatter or the linter, because you can just ignore these. None of these rules are part of the default set, um, which I guess is the only way they can really get away with it. Um, but as new rules come in, some may also conflict with the formatter in other ways and then suddenly you've got additional things so you know, it's it's kind of a give and take whether or not you use the formatter or not at this time i personally will probably stick to using black for now uh, but i did want to bring the, the formatter into the into the limelight because i think once it's more mature um, and once it's had a bit more time put into it it will be a, you know, pretty much as game changing as the linter. I mean, the functionality is already there. It just needs to be uh, cleaned up a little bit so it doesn't conflict with anything. Of course, if you like the video and leave a like to let me know and consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this. If you have any questions about what you've seen here 
or any ideas or videos you want me to do in the future, then do let me know in the comments. I read every single one, so your feedback is greatly appreciated. If you want to support the channel monetarily, you can do so either by becoming a patron or a member. One pound a month on either, and you can be on the screen like these people. And I will see you in the next video where we talk about multiprocessing. So in... <laughs> In light of Python 3.13 potentially making multiprocessing redundant, we'll see, you know, what it is and how it solves, well, sort of solves the problem that Python 3.13 is trying to solve in its own way. Uh, so we'll see you for that.